And then stepping back, what we have here are three great friends doing great, happy and engaged. We, we talk about blue zone principles on this show, principles of longevity and superior health in advancing decades. And I think of the three of you really as an embodiment of four of those truly. And um, we'll just take a minute for, for pictures, but though that being four of those principles being family, a sense of tribe, knowing your purpose, and a sense of belonging, particularly in the context of faith communities. Everyone here has had great marriages, great children, great group of friends. You guys are thick as thieves. Sense of strong purpose is driving everybody and strong involvement in faith communities. And Gary, for you in particular, and Jim Edens is, or sorry, Gary Edens is at church every week, and that's very important to him. Um, so really embodying those blue zone principles and showing us what those can achieve in, in our lives. How often do you guys get together and have some fun? Gary Edens? Well, Gary Driggs and I hike seven days a week on 36th Street, and uh, we get at least 10,000 steps a day. And recently I've been getting about 20,000 steps a day. And it's just a, it's a, it's good camaraderie. And we go on these annual hiking trips every January called the Two Gary's Hike. And this year will be the 20th anniversary. And we hope to have about 12 to 15 uh, folks there. Where, where will it be this year? It'll be at the Grand Canyon, which is where it started. So it'll be very nostalgic. And uh, we're not quite the hikers we used to be. I mean, some of us have done the Grand Canyon rim to rim in one day many times, but we're gonna make this a little more camaraderie than hiking. We're gonna hike down to Indian Garden and back, then we're gonna have dinner. How long of a hike is that? <laughs> uh, probably four or five hours at most. Oh, that's a long hike. And then we will uh, also have for people that don't wanna go down, and this will be in January. So Perfect, it could I wanna be, go. It could be snowy you know, weather. Well, you'll need your crampons for the snow, but uh, there'll be a rim hike, and that's going to be about eight miles, so uh, just around the rim, and that's a beautiful trail up there, and there's no hill work. You're just kind of walking around the rim on a gorgeous trail with beautiful, beautiful overlooks. I'm a little bit scared of hi that it's so steep. I mm -hmm. just, I, I've only gone down a little bit with, with Kay and Chet, his, uh, Chet's grandparents, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of scared me, so I don't know. Well, the first time a good friend of ours, Bill Riley, went with us, he had never hiked in winter, and we went to the Babbitt Trading Post, and uh, there was this old guy there named Maverick, and he sold crampons, and he sold uh, uh, poles, and Bill said, we're going down the Kaibab Trail that's all icy and snowy. Do you think I need some of those crampons to keep me on the trail? And the guy said, yeah, yeah, unless you want to be one of them <laughs> screamers. <laughs> he sold a lot of crampons by saying, unless you want to be one of them screamers. <laughs> but yes, it's very cold at the Grand Canyon in January, but that's part of the charm of the trip. So who else going? Oh, it's a lot of names you would know. Uh, most people, uh, we, we went a little younger uh, last year and got a guy in his 60s. Uh, but it's uh, it's mostly uh, uh, longtime friends. Uh, uh, a longtime friend of, of ours is uh, Charlie Dunlap. You've heard of Dunlap, mm -hmm. Arizona. I mean Dunlap, uh, the street and all of that. He's he's a longtime native. Uh, other others would be uh, Phil Francis. Phil's the former uh, CEO of PetSmart. Uh, I we, see him almost every morning. That's the right. The tall guy. That's right. And, yeah. and as I said, Bill Riley. Bill has given a lot back to the community. He was uh, chairman of the uh, University of Arizona Medical Center, and uh, he's been a longtime uh, uh, participant in civic activities. Years ago, he was uh, chairman of the Arizona <laughs> State Fair at the Coliseum. That was years and years Chet, ago. Chet, he was very good friends with your grandpa. Uh, so he, he, he speaks highly about him. In fact, I was with um, the two, Gary and, and Bill Riley, uh, on Chet's birthday, on Grandpa's birthday. And so we were reminiscing about uh, Pa. We had coffee on that day on November 13th. Rest in peace. And Dr. Driggs, you wrote a white paper in a major medical journal. Do you want to tell us about the white paper you contributed? Well, about 15 years ago, I contracted uh, prostate cancer. And uh, I found a great uh, doctor and a good program uh, to uh, treat it with just uh, changes in lifestyle. So I wrote an article entitled, 
how prostate cancer can extend your life. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain that to us? <laughs> well, the point is prostate cancer and many other cancers respond to changes in lifestyle. And so if you're motivated by getting an improvement in a cancer diagnosis, lifestyle changes can extend your life because, for example, the main cause of life is heart disease, and the best thing for heart disease is to start exercising and getting your weight down and living a healthy lifestyle, and that will extend your life even if you have cancer. And so if the cancer motivates us to change our lifestyle, to make a more healthy lifestyle, which we all know we should do anyway, is there anybody that doesn't know we should exercise <laughs> regularly, eat a healthy diet, getting adequate sleep, and keep your relationships with others on a favorable basis? Those things extend life, and we all know we should do it, but a milkshake or a big box of candy looks attractive, <laughs> and we <laughs> wolf it down before we realize that we may have just clipped off a few minutes from our life expectancy. Hey, Gary, tell them about, uh, you used to be a big ice cream eater. Tell them how you got out of the habit after this of eating ice cream. Well, we all know what the symbol of poison is. It's a skull and crossbones <laughs> that you see on a label. And so all you have to do is start imagining when you look at the creme brulee or a milkshake, that it has a skull and crossbones stamped on the side of the container. And that may dissuade you from eating the whole thing. And we can always remember that Burger King ad where we had the old lady that said, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. And well, a big step towards a healthy lifestyle is to not eat the whole thing. Yeah, that lady is not alive anymore, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> she's not with us. So, so, ba so back to so you basically healed yourself because you didn't allow them to do the surgery uh, on you, and and the reason why was can I is, is it appropriate for me to say? Well, um, prostate cancer is a very common disease. In fact, if you're a male, your probability of having prostate cancer is your age. So a 50-year-old male has a 50% chance of having prostate cancer. If you're 90, you have a 90% chance of having prostate cancer. And that cancer will probably be with you when you die, not cause you to die. So a lot of things are just better to be treated by lifestyle than extreme treatments because uh, lots of people that uh, get operations and other things, for a male, you could lose potency and continence, which are very important to every male, and uh, the surgery and radiation can often interfere with those two things. Changes in lifestyle allow you to not have the bad side effects sometimes of radiation or surgery. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't cases where you do need extreme treatment, but for many diseases, you have to separate the line between what you can live with and what you can improve with treatment. One of Gary's good lines about doctors, and I'm sorry, Dr. Jim, is there's no such thing no such thing as unnecessary surgery when your surgeon has three kids in college. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that should motivate us all to choose the lifestyle option is maintaining what we all hold dear as men and that it being potency and continence. Right. Yes. So choose the lifestyle what option. What do you mean by potency? You have to ask. <laughs> Chet, what would you understand potency to mean? Uh, you got to have your energy still. I feel like that's the best way to put it. If you're doing radiation treatments and you have chemo, you're not going to have any energy. Well, I would say potency is your ability to maintain a meaningful sex life. 
Yes, and uh, is that what it means, Gary? Exactly. <laughs> that goes away if they go in there and scramble your prostate. So, gentlemen, choose lifestyle, fruits so, and vegetables. So, on that note, we can talk about your marriage. I'm really curious to hear about you and Kay. Well, Kay and I have celebrated our 61st first 61st wedding anniversary, and I'm very Congrats. fortunate to, to uh, have the same wife. And uh, what's the secret to such a happy marriage for so many years? Well, the secret is to give your wife regular foot rubs <laughs> because <laughs> women abuse their feet terribly. Why would anybody walk around on some little four inch high, tiny, wobbly thing that you could fall down with? And uh, so their feet constantly hurt. And lots of people have asked me for my advice on marriage. And I tell, give your, tell them, give your wife regular foot rubs. And I add, good things will follow. <laughs> <laughs> and to avoid arguments, what's your solution to avoiding arguments? Well, if you're touching skin to skin, it's almost impossible to have an argument. Try holding hands with your wife or girlfriend and see if you can carry on an argument and you just about can't do it. There's something magical about human beings touching other human beings. It's part of our nature and that's where how we feel affection and children want to hug their or hold on to their parents. Boys and girls love to touch each other and I don't mean in an inappropriate way but uh, uh, dancing, just almost all of our social activities really involve one way or another touching other human beings and it's a magical thing that we need to not disregard and we need to realize that the human touch is something that's really important and if we'll do that it'll be better for families and marriages and all of our relationships. And Jim Kitchell, you have an interesting experience with marriage that's worked out serendipitously and well for you in the long run. Do you want to tell us about that? I've had the opportunity to have two wives, which is really... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a, Chet, you got to listen to this. Chet, this is super funny, and Gary Edens has to chime this, in here. This is really a special opportunity to have two wives, both of them wonderful ladies, and 13-year uh, marriage the first time, and 30 years on this one. The nice thing about the entire marriage relationship is that my first wife and my current wife are very best of friends and work together in many ways. So Chet, they're all on the same Christmas card together. His ex-wife and his wife, current wife, are like so close that they share a Christmas card. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome to be inclusive and loving each other. I Absolutely. Think it's, yeah, it's terrible to hear about when families well, are separated. Uh, and stuff. I agree. I've often said that uh, in the first relationship, wife, uh, we were friends before we were married, while we were married, and during the, the breakup, and always friends. So it was just a wonderful relationship. And this is the blue zone principle of creating your tribe tribe, your support structure that's around you. So that's it's fabulous. That's worked out for you so well. Yeah, thank you. So I, I want to ask Gary Driggs about his marriage proposal. Well, I dated my current wife for the better part of about nine months, and I wanted to make sure that uh, she accepted my proposal for marriage. So I didn't say, will you marry me? I simply said, when shall we get married? So there wasn't a chance to say no. It was pick a date. <laughs> so Chet, remember that when you're proposing. I will. That's a good move. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that's Do you pretty have some prospects out there <laughs> that you want to tell us about? Oh, yeah, my girlfriend, Christina. We've been dating for three years now, actually. Or, yeah. I love Christina. Three years and three months, so things are going well. Great. Well, get married and have a bunch of children. Us old people need more taxpayers <laughs> to support us in our old age. <laughs> so we desperately in this country need more children. So that's your assignment. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are actually like having kids right now amid the pandemic. 
I, would, I think it's kind of an interesting time to want to have kids. Really? You never told me that? Who's having kids? Uh, well, none of my, like, you know, good high school friends that you know, but, you know, it's from some of my friends from college and some of my girlfriend's friends. They're, you know, really looking forward to having kids, and some of them are even pregnant, have I already want had kids. kids. Chad, I want grandkids. Yes, I agree. I'm definitely going to have kids at some point in the future, but I want to wait for the world to be a little more stable right now. No, no, no. You want to be young and you've got a built-in babysitter. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm talking about the whole, like, the fact schools and, you know, movie theaters and everything are shut down right Homeschool. now. Homeschool. They can homeschool crazy. with me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to go to Gary Edens now. We want to hear about Gary Edens and his beautiful... Uh, he was married for, uh, is it 54 years? 54 and a half years, yes. Before uh, she died in January, right? And you also had uh, a beautiful relationship. Yes, we, uh, we just, we never had any harsh words, you know. We just, uh, uh, she was a blind date, and when I met her on, um, when I was uh, a senior in, in college, uh, it was a blind date, and I just knew when I saw her, she's the one. And so I haven't had a date in 57 years. So uh, wow. I think, you know, after a year or two, I'll probably uh, see, see what it's like to date. But my daughters will help me, and I'm sure they'll give me some advice and counsel, as will Gary Driggs and Jim Kitchell <laughs> and all my friends, okay? Well, maybe, I, I'll, maybe I'll find some lady on the hiking trail sometime. What do you think? There you yeah? go. There right. you go. Well, well, Gary, I think that you're very lucky to have this beautiful tribe to help you bounce back from, you. from, from that tragedy of, of, you. your, of losing your wife. And uh, I can see that you're out there having fun. And, you know, Chet, we got to get you on the trail. I hike a lot, so but I'm surprised wanna... I don't see you up there. You probably go a little bit earlier than I do. I go, like, usually around 10 once it's warmed up a bit. <laughs> have Gary tell you his formula for resolving anger in the family it's fabulous oh well the rule that we had with our kids uh sue ellen and i have two daughters emily and ashley and we had a rule and that was everybody can get mad we're all entitled to be able to get mad but in our family the four of us you could only stay mad for 10 minutes and only one person could be mad at a time so Ashley would get mad, for example, and then Emily, you know, about five minutes later would say, well, I'm, I, I'm mad. No, nope, no, nope, you have five minutes to go. Only one person can be mad at a time, and <laughs> Ashley has five more minutes to go. And then you can be mad, but only one person at a time in the family could be mad. And they now do that with their kids, and I think it works pretty well. It's just family rules for not having a lot of anger. And if you do get angry, it can only last ten minutes. So you guys have accomplished so much, and our audience is filled with people who are trying to accomplish and wish to accomplish more, myself being one of those people, look, always looking for advice and great examples. Gary, what can you tell us about serendipity? Well, when people ask me for advice, I give them a word of advice, and the word is serendipity, which means finding what you're not looking for. All of us pass by tremendous opportunities in our life, but we're not open-minded to recognize those opportunities. So the word of advice is serendipity. Remember to keep an open mind. And you use the Viagra story to illustrate the value of serendipity. Could you just share that with us one more time? Well, Viagra started out as a uh, heart drug. And uh, they finished the trial and they asked people to return the unused drugs and they wouldn't do it because it turned out to be helpful in other ways. <laughs> That's funny. So they wouldn't with, give them a drug po- pack. They, with they potency? <laughs> <laughs> that, so really, a fabulous example of serendipity. But, you know, with the economic downturn, people aren't traveling. You own hotels. How are you powering through that? Well, it's a combination of looking for every opportunity right now at two of our hotels. We're... we're uh, hotel in the residence for 300 visiting nurses in in El Paso that are coming to work on the the pandemic cases. So there's always opportunities and just keep an open mind in whatever business you're in or whatever thing in life. Never give up. There's always an opportunity. 
So we only have about a minute left, and we want to hear some of your quotes. Can we start? Oh, one time I asked Gary, I said, Gary, I know you've got eight or nine hotels, and I've been to some of them, and you have bars, and you serve beer, whiskey, and alcohol there, and you're a Mormon, and you've never had a drink in your life, and the Marriott's are Mormons, and they have hundreds of thousands of hotel bars where they serve beer, liquor, and wine. As a Mormon, Gary, how do you justify that? And his answer was, By rising above principle. <laughs> <laughs> Another great quote of Gary is uh, he, he gave a YPO graduation speech. They kick you out of YPO when you're 50 years old and you make a little speech. So he gave this wonderful speech about his life and his career. And he said, So in summary, to be rem remembered as a great man in my business, die in an upcycle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one about the ladder? Oh, uh, yeah. He said, uh, uh, nepotism, don't knock it till you tried it. It's easier to climb the ladder of success when your papa owns the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> no. I do remember when the savings and loans got in trouble, he had a great line called, um, a rolling loan gathers no loss. <laughs> no. I like the one about there being a lot of vultures in the desert, so keep moving. Well, thank you so much, uh, Gary Driggs and Jim Kitchell and Gary Edens. It's been a great show. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are my heroes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoyed it. We'll look for you on the hike. Thank you for listening to In the Green Room. Join us here live every Tuesday at 6 p.m or anytime on demand 24-7 on StarWorldWideNetworks.com.